join us as well. So we haven't in the past actually um, had a, a senator here. Um, so I think that'll make an interesting addition to our panel. So do you guys have opening remarks you want to make? Or do you want to go straight to questions? Yeah, what? Good evening. You don't call Glenn Whitley, by the way. I wrote him a letter today. He needs to hear from us. Um, this session was, for me, the most frustrating session. Um, I'm sure we're going to get into that. But I want to say before we get started that <clears throat> there's a disagreement in the conservative movement on a number of things. And that doesn't mean that there's not personal respect for other individuals or that I'm trying to attack them personally. So if you hear disagreement tonight, I want to be very clear. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't have love for, some, for the two folks that are up here. So I just wanted to lay that out. I feel like it's my job to tell you the truth as I see it. Sometimes perspective matters. And I will tell you that um, there are many times this session that folks from Tarrant County had a different perspective. So it's going to be up for y'all to make the decision on which way you see it. And it might be a, a mismatch. It might do everything else. But I just want to say that just because I see something completely different than, say, Representative Krause here, who's my good friend, does not mean that I don't respect this man or that it's a personal attack. So I just wanted to start the conversation with that. I also want to thank you guys. Um, had so much encouragement, had some rough days, some, some bad votes, a lot of different things. And knowing that you are back at home makes all of that so much easier and keeps things in a perspective. So from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of my family, thank you for your love, support, and prayers, because we felt them. And, and I echo Jonathan's con uh, comments. I think there's going to be some disagreement, and that's okay. Um, it's how you uh, voice that and how you go about uh, voicing those disagreements that I think that helps. I always say that I love Fran uh, Rose because we disagree a couple of times this session on, on different things, and she calls me to task and she keeps me accountable, but always in a way that I think actually uh, promotes communication and dialogue with us. It helps me know, okay, this is where I'm maybe straight here is where I'm doing okay here. And, uh, and, and so that's very valuable. So I just wanna, I, I think we did some really good things this session, some really good things. I think there were also some big missed opportunities this session uh, that, that we need to focus on for next session. So uh, I'm excited to answer your questions. I do wanna say my beautiful wife, Jenny, here tonight. She doesn't always get to come to these things and we had a busted pipe in our house uh, a couple of hours ago, so I didn't know she's gonna be here tonight. Uh, but in-laws are awesome and so uh, they were gonna be there. So for Jenny and the kids, uh, for what they did for the last five or six months, if you'd give her a round of applause. Thank you. All right, you guys ready? Okay. If Texas is so pro-life and Republicans have the majority, including the House and Senate Speaker, Lieutenant Governor, and Governor, why are pro-life bills left to die in committees, and why did the Speaker appoint Rep. Thompson as Chair of Public Health? Well, that last question is a question the Speaker would have to answer. I don't think any of us uh, know why uh, can go into his thought process. In terms of pro-life legislation, um, I was telling uh, Luke Macias earlier today, I was talking with him, and I said, anytime you see the, the Democrat governor of Louisiana signing a heartbeat bill, it does make you feel like, man, we missed uh, an opportunity there. Uh, I will say that, you know, sometimes it's a matter of numbers, too. Uh, Representative Matt Schaefer out of Tyler has done an incredible job the last couple of sessions on the House floor uh, prior to this one trying to get a fetal abnormality amendment added to our pro-life bills, and it just it hasn't happened. Every time, and it wasn't because of Democrats, because we always had numbers, because of Republicans. And so I, I think there was a bit to some of the pro-life bills uh, didn't make it onto the floor because they weren't sure that there were actual re enough Republican votes there to actually pass them. So uh, I, again, the, where I said we did some really good things, uh, one of the really good things I think we did this session was on budget days, uh, Representative Stickland and I and some others worked together on funding alternatives to abortion. Uh, last session, we got uh, on budget day, we added $20 million to that uh, program, which took us from $18 million to $38 million. 
This time we took it from 38 million to 90 million. And what these alternative to abortion programs do is allow, uh, it, it's exactly what it says, it's for adoption agencies, it's for uh, health care for mothers, it's for prenatal care, it's for postnatal care, it's all these things that help cultivate a, a, a culture of life here in Texas and provide for the sanctity of life. And so when we're funding that almost 300% more than we have in the past, uh, what we did in the House wasn't matched in the Senate, so they actually kind of met in the middle there. Uh, was a little less, but uh, so I, I think there were some good things we did on the pro-life front, but obviously we missed some opportunities as well. So I know that's one area that Representative Stickland's passionate about. It's one area I'm very passionate about as well. And so I look forward to uh, hopefully getting back down there next session and improving on that. Did we miss a window? We're seeing a lot of other states move uh, more aggressively on pro-life uh, legislation. Yeah, we probably did with some of that political reality of what you could get out of the, the House. Probably some of it was, but we learned those lessons and we move forward next time. So this is probably going to be a, a familiar theme to answering a lot of these questions, assuming they're along the same lines. And, and here's what it comes down to for me. In the last election, Democrats made huge gains. Okay. And there's two different ways to respond to that from the Republican side. Number one, you can do what we did, which is run to the left and try and not be noticed. Or you can view it as this may be our last chance to get anything significant in case Texas does turn blue. I have a feeling and a theory that if conservatives would be who we are, that it draws a contrast to our opposition. The folks who I've talked to coming home are very upset. The property taxes situation was not addressed properly. A lot of different missed opportunities. I don't know anyone who's excited about going and block walking on a Saturday in the next election. And I don't know a lot of donors who are ready to pull out their pocket book and give money to a legislator. 